So what's going on guys, Kate is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you 20 mistakes that you don't want to make in Hogwarts Legacy. So at the start I will show you how can you earn experience very fast, then how and when should you upgrade your gear, then what is the best wand that you can make at the start of the game, and then lastly I will tell you many more hidden tips and tricks. So for example how to make money very fast, then how can you unlock the fast travel, where can you find the eye chests, how to get more gear slots and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then first of all you want to use the Revealio spell all the time to reveal hidden things in the world and earn XP faster. Revealio is basically like a wizard vision and will highlight objects, enemies and more in the world. It will work through walls, showing enemies, loot, incredible objects and basically anything that you might need or want. Use it at all time for exactly that reason. It will also reveal the plenty of field guide pages for you to collect, which can often turn up in some unassuming places. Out of all Hogwarts Legacy spells you will unlock, this one you will want to use constantly. So then moving over to the second one, and players in the first two hours of the game can choose their own wand in the form of length, wand core and wood type. In general there are three wand cores. The first one is called the Jagan's Heart String. Wands made from the Jagan's Core are easier to adapt and learn than others. Jagan Heart String are the most powerful yet the easiest core to turn to the Dark Arts. Then the second one is called the Phoenix Feather. Phoenix Cores are capable of reducing a great range of magic. It is one of the most rare wand cores. The Phoenix Feathers are the hardest to turn docile and are the most difficult one to secure loyalty. Then the third one is called the Unicorn Tail Hair. Although not the most powerful core of the wands, the Unicorn's core are the least prone to mishaps when casting a spell. They're literally the opposite of the Jagan's core. Wands made with Unicorn Tail Hair are also the least likely to turn to the Dark Arts. Then moving over to the next category and in general there are 38 types of wood. And I would recommend to go with the Walnut, as Walnut Wands are terrifyingly powerful when possessed by a wizard or a witch, making it very dangerous when in the hands of those without morals. And then lastly we can pick the Wand's length. Players can choose between 9 and half inches and 14 and half inches for the length of their wand. This will not affect the gameplay and is purely only for cosmetic purpose. So in a quick summary, for the best overall wand you want to pick the Jagan's Heartstring Core, then the Walnut Wood Type, and for the length go with the max which is 14 and half inches, because the longer the better. So then moving over to the next one and after you reach level 5 and complete 2-3 hours of the main story, you will unlock the ability to use talent points and after each level up you will get one talent point which can be spent in any of these 5 categories. So if you want to unlock more skill slots, so for example you could do this and mid fight change from 4 spells to 4 more, then what you want to do this is simply open the talent page, then click on the core and then you want to spend your first 2 points on the spell knowledge 1 and spell knowledge 2. Doing this will unlock more skill presets, so then you can easily press T or whatever keybind you have for the spells and then just drag and drop your unlocked spells. And then now at any time you can easily scroll with your mouse wheel to change to the other 4 spells or if you are on controller then use the d-pad and it's that simple. So then moving over to the next step and in this one I will show you how can you unlock all 3 forbidden spells. In general there are 3 forbidden spells, the first one is called the killing curse called the avada kedavra, then the second one is the cruciatus curse called the crucio. And then lastly we have the Imperious Curse called the Imperio. Each one of these spells is immensely powerful in combat, so make sure you utilize them frequently once they're unlocked. So then the first unforgivable spell that you can learn in Hogwarts Legacy is the Cruciatus Curse called Crucio. As with all the Dark Arts spells they're tied to the Sebastian Cello side quest chain. And once you've progressed enough of the Sebastian's mission and hit level 16, then you will be given in the Shadow of the Study quest, which after completing you will then get the first spell. Then after unlocking the Crucio and progressing more of the Hogwarts Legacy main story, around level 20 then you will receive another L from the Sebastian, and then you will again gain access in the Shadow of the Time quest, 
and this will give you the second spell called the Imperious Curse. And then lastly for the Avada Kedavra Curse, before receiving an L from the Sebastian, you will need to reach level 27, which can be easily achieved by completing the main stories, doing side quests or just exploring the open world. And after hitting this level, then you will gain access in the Shadow of the Relic quest, in which Sebastian casts the Killing Curse and he will offer to teach it to you, and that's about it. There are 4 difficulty settings in Hogwarts Legacy. Story, Easy, Normal and Hard. Players can change the game's difficulty while playing the game in the Gameplay Options screen under the Settings menu. This can be useful for players that find a particular quest challenging, or if you just want to try out the different difficulty options. So to do this at any time, just pause the game and select the Settings menu. Then select the fourth option on the Settings menu to open the gameplay option screen and then hover over to the difficulty option and then select it to show a job down menu that will contain all the available difficulties and it's that simple. Then moving over to the next one and pretty much everything that you can do in this game is locked behind the main mission checkpoint. While you might want to unlock the Hogwarts Legacy broomstick super fast or learn a particular spell right away, the game absolutely won't let you do anything before it's ready. Everything is locked behind the story, so don't waste any of your time trying to look for anything. You'll get there when you're allowed and no sooner. So in the first 2-3 hours of the game, I would recommend to just follow the main story and then the game will allow you and actually reward you if you explore it a bit later. So you keep all the clothing you find for chance mug, regardless of whether you sell it or not. So you will find a lot of clothes and other accessories in your adventures, and the majority of them are downright awful. Thankfully the game has a chance mug from the very beginning meaning that you can just up your witch or wizard with exactly that type of look that you want, rather than a mess of whatever your highest level kit is. So you can change the appearance of each of your items of clothing by hovering over it and pressing the square or X and you will notice that you retain the look of everything you were ever picked up, even if you sold it. This comes very handy especially if you get a better item, but if you still want to wear the old outfit. Then for the next one I would recommend to check your gear all the time to swap in the higher level items to improve your stats. So you'll be getting and picking up slightly better wizard robes pretty much the entire time that you are playing. The sheer volume of gear you'll accumulate means that you will often forget to check what you've been collecting. So make a habit of checking your gear regularly, as you will get some pretty good items very early. You can improve your stats by switching to better gear all the time, and you'll see a green arrow indicating better stats next to the items as you collect them, and if red then it's weaker. So if you're able to, then swap the items as soon as you see the green icon. Then moving over to the next one and in Hogwarts Legacy, players can upgrade their gear with various traits using the loom. Traits are bonuses that you can apply into your gear to provide additional effects to them. Some traits offer a defensive abilities, while others buff up your damage or attack. You can obtain traits by collecting the trait recipes from the bandit camps. So what you want to do is look for the camp icon in the world to find one. And then you can use the loom to upgrade your gear inside the room of requirement. You will need to unlock the room of requirement first, before you can get access to the loom and other stations inside. You can then equip a trait to your gear or upgrade the gear itself for additional effects and increase its stats. However, make sure that you have enough upgraded materials or you won't be able to upgrade it. And to get more upgrading materials, I would recommend to tend to the beast that you've rescued in the vivarium. So you have limited inventory space for gear, and all of your gear shares the same space, so you might not be able to pick up a new pair of gloves if you already have a huge hat collection. Luckily there's no reason to hold on to low level items in your inventory, it will only ultimately just prevent you from getting new items. So to simply make extra money, all you wanna do is go to the vendors and sell all of your unused gear. In Hogwarts Legacy, the flying broom can be used to fly around the open world quickly. It is also required to play the broom races for the Godfly trophy and achievement. You can unlock the flying broom by completing the main quest called the flying class. This happens automatically about a third into the story, which should be about 5 plus hours into the game. Then when you finish the quest, then you can buy flying brooms from the spin witch's sporting needs in Hogsmeade. It will cost 600 money. Like I said previously, you can get money quickly by selling old gear items that you no longer need. So then moving over to the next one, and eye chests are a quick way to get cash fast. 
you will see Hogwarts Legacy eye chests fairly early in the game and probably wonder what to do with them. Well, opening them will earn you 500 gallons, which is useful cash but like everything in the game, doing this is tied to the story. So keep playing the main missions until you see the mission, which is called the Secrets of the Restricted Section. Doing that will unlock the Disillusionment spell, which will make you more or less invisible. And once you have that, you can sneak up on the eyeball chests and open them up to get the cash inside. So there are a variety of shops in Hogsmeade, and if you ignore any of them then you will be in trouble later. I already mentioned the Thompson Scrolls along with the Broom and Peck, but the Dogweed and Deadcap to the north of the Hogsmeade is the only place that you can buy a variety of necessary seeds, while the potion recipes will only come from the J. Pippin's potions. Gladrax's Wizardware will also sell gear that should be appropriate for your level, which will make you very strong, and this will be ideal if you need a quick power boost before you're fighting a big monster. I would usually recommend to buy all the tomes and scrolls, and then if you still want to slightly improve your character, then look into the better gear, but mainly the best items will be the ones that drop from monsters, or the ones that you can craft, or even the ones that you can collect from quests. So over time you will want more Hogwarts Legacy gear slots, and these are essentially your pockets, but just for clothing like cloaks, hats and other clothing. Like I said, you only start with 20 slots, which will fill up once you start opening up chests, getting quest rewards and shopping in the Hogsmeade. Getting more gear slots in Hogwarts Legacy is pretty tough, and will involve completing what's known as the Merlin's Trials, which is a set of smaller puzzles that you will need to find through the map and then you will need to use the Mellow Sea to unlock them. You can only get more gear slots by completing these Hogwarts Legacy Merlin challenges. These are separated side quests that you will need to finish before you can start expanding your gear slots. And once you've done that though, you will be able to earn more gear slots by completing the Merlin Trial related challenges. In the exploration section of the challenges, there is one for completing the Merlin Trials. You will get 4 new gear slots per challenge, and there are 5 separate challenges to complete. The first one will ask you to complete the two Merlin Trials, then the second one 6, and so on and so forth. That means that there are a total of 20 additional gear slots, up for grabs by completing the Merlin Trials. So flu flames allow players to instantly travel from one area to another. But flu flames need to be discovered first. Getting close enough to an undiscovered flu flame will activate it and make the flame available for fast travel use. So I would recommend to keep an eye on, on icons with white flame while exploring to spot undiscovered flu flames. These fast travel spots will be at random places. And right now I have found them at the Grand Staircase, then at the Transfiguration Courtyard, then on the Clock Tower Courtyard, then in the Viaduct Courtyard, then in the Defense Against the Dark Arts Classroom, and then lastly in the Common Rooms as well. So, you can change your hair and facial features at Hogsmeade. If you regret the choice that you made in the character creation then don't worry, because you can change your hair color, the style, eyebrows and facial features at a little shop in Hogsmeade. So if you wanna do this, then head over to the Madame Snelling's Tress Imperium, and for a small fee, you can switch up your look whenever you like. Unfortunately, you can't change your overall face, but everything else can be customized, no matter what you chose at the start of the game. So, missions tell you what rewards you will get for completing them. If you want to know whether a mission will be worth your effort, then check the quest menu to see what rewards you will earn for completing the task. In these missions you can get anything starting from unique spells, the new gear appearance, then gold and much more. You can even choose to double cross the quest giver, keeping it whatever item they wanted you to retrieve for them as well as your reward. Sometimes you can even extort them for more gold, but you should expect them to get rather angry with you, and make a pointed comment about your treachery, if you next time come across them. So then for one of the last steps, and I would recommend to collect every ingredient that you can see in the open world, because all of that will be useful later for potion making. As you run, fly or swoop around the map, you might come across potion ingredients growing in the wild. Some ingredients such as horklam juice and jumping toadstool are very important for brewing helpful concoctions, like the Wingenveld potion or the Erdurus potion. To save yourself time later down the line, scavenge as many wild ingredients as you can. There is no max capacity for the ingredients that your character can hold, so it's better to take all that you can. When you eventually unlock the Hogwarts Legacy Room of Requirement, then you will be able to grow and harvest your own resources. 
So, there are dozens of character quests in the game, and you should complete all of them very often. Character quests often will take you to the new parts of Hogwarts, and will even teach you brand new spells. If you don't want to miss out, then make sure that you accept and take all the character and relationship quests when they appear, and these will improve your character skill very fast. And then for the last and final tip we have the room of requirement, and this is a bit of a home base in Hogwarts Legacy, and you will be able to customize it in a variety of ways, including by placing furniture and decoration. Most importantly though, you will be able to grow plants, then place potion stations, then you will even get a vivarium, in which you can store your rescued beasts. I would strongly recommend for you to work with Professor Beasley, so you would be able to unlock this room as early as possible, and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate and want for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Hogwarts Legacy guides that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.